Hey guys, it's me, Arlene, Delicious Delights, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you some fantastic, gorgeous, beautiful fall perfumes. Of course, you can wear these fragrances any time of year, but these fragrances, for me, I think are appropriate more so for colder weather. So these are designer perfumes. I have six perfumes here that I want to share with you guys. And yeah, let's just begin with a very affordable scent. We have a perfume from the House of Elizabeth Arden, and this is Fifth Avenue Royale. This is definitely a hidden gem scent. I hear about this one a little bit here and there, uh, but for the most part, it's not that popular. And um, I think I paid around 20 euros for this, maybe 25, I'm not really sure. Um, but this is a fantastic leather scent. So it's kind of heavy, not too heavy, but it has this earthy leather accord in here with a little bit of sweetness lingering in the background. I can't remember what the notes are, but all I can say is that it smells expensive. It smells more than the 25 or 20 euros that I spent on this. And it's such a different scent from what I'm used to when it comes to Elizabeth Arden. When I think of Elizabeth Arden, I think of the green tea series or any of those white tea perfumes, just really light, fresh and airy floral. Uh, but this is a lot darker. Um, also, the, the, the bottle is beautiful here with the nice details. It is a darker scent um, that smells very much of a fancy leather bag or leather gloves. And um, it's fantastic, you guys. So great cheapy hidden gem, love it so much. Um, perfect for cold weather, Elizabeth Arden, Fifth Avenue Royale, a flanker of the Fifth Avenue, which I always see at my local chemists, but I never, I never felt the need or the urge to try it for some reason. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we have a fragrance from the house of Narciso Rodriguez. Uh, this is their newest release, and it's called Musk Noir. Uh, for her. So Narciso Rodriguez for her Musk Noir. Uh, Blind bought this one because I pretty much like everything from this house, you guys. Really can't go wrong. <laughs> and um, it's mostly because the musk that they use works really well on me. And oh, you guys, this is also a leathery scent. Suede leather, very smooth creamy and um, there's some fruitiness in here. I think plum is in the notes, um, but it's not overly sweet. It's just this really gorgeous leather scent with um, some musky undertones and some fruitiness. Uh, it's so classy and elegant and I'm just loving this so, so much. I think you can wear this year round for sure because it doesn't really feel heavy on me. Um, appropriate for all occasions and uh, it's so good. <laughs> so that's Narciso Rodriguez for her Musk Noir. Now the next fragrance is another one from Narciso Rodriguez. And this is probably my most favorite Narciso perfume of all time. Uh, this is Narciso Rodriguez for her Lab Salu. I have been raving about this perfume on my channel for at least a few years. Um, I still love it now as much as I did back then, you guys. And this is also a musky scent. Oh, man. <laughs> this one to me is just so, so gorgeous. It, it's just beautiful, you guys. So in here, there's two bros. It's mostly a two bros scent, uh, but two bros musk. Uh, but when I smell this, I think of something else. And I've said this before, uh, this to me reminds me of like a cherry flavored red wine, a red wine type of thing, or a cherried compote and you put a little bit of booze in there. Uh, that's what I get in here. Um, also, there's this gorgeous musk that we're all familiar with especially if you're, you know, if you're a fan of the Narciso perfumes. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Perfect, again, for fall, winter. Makes me feel extra special, extra dressed up. And um, 
so good. Number one from the house, in my opinion. Narciso Rodriguez for her Labzalu. Now moving on to a fragrance from the house of YSL and one that I don't really talk about very much on my channel, uh, but I still really enjoy this scent a lot. This is Manifesto EDP and I love the bottle design. It makes me think of an hourglass figure of a woman. And this is such a pretty, pretty scent. It's sweet, it's fruity, um, but it's not like sweet in a candy-like immature way uh, or youthful way for me. This is very sophisticated, sweet, but I don't know, it just makes me feel more womanly. <laughs> it could be also because of the shape of the bottle, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, this is a fantastic black currant. Uh, sweet scent, not overly sweet. Um, of course, younger people can wear this as well, but for me, when I wear this, it makes me feel more mature. And um, it is super sexy, and I just love this one so much. Performance, fantastic uh, with this perfume. There's so many flankers of this perfume. However, for me, this is my favorite of them all, I think, for now, anyways. <laughs> so this is Manifesto EDP from the house of YSL Yves Saint Laurent. Now let's move on to another leathery scent. It might even be the note of the season for me. This is a newer one in my collection from the house of Bottega Veneta, and it's called Labsalu. Flanker of the original Bottega Veneta, uh, which I think is such a fabulous scent, you guys. Um, not that popular, but um, it's kind of underrated, I would say. Um, I like that version as well, but I managed to pick this one up on sale, so I got this version, and I love this one as well. <laughs> so this is a smooth suede leather scent. It is quite soft and buttery, and I can also, when I smell this, I'm kind of imagining running my hand across like a nice new leather handbag. You know that feeling? It's kind of buttery and soft and supple. <laughs> uh, that's what I get from here. So this is super classy suede, a little bit of powder in here, uh, a little bit of sweetness too, and it has this nice earthy feeling to it without smelling dirty or anything. For me, it's a clean smelling leather and um, another underrated fragrance for sure. I actually think the house of Bottega Veneta, their fragrances are all underrated and beautiful. So that's Bottega Veneta Lab Salut Eau de Parfum. And now let's move on to the next one here. This is also one that's quite new to my collection and it's from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. And we have this stunning, sparkly, blingy bottle of Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Pinup, which is, of course, a flanker of uh, the original Classique. Uh, the juice here is this really cute pink color. It's just so girly to me and feminine. And then I feel extra girly and feminine when I wear this. And um, this one is such a fantastic marshmallow, vanilla, orange blossom, ginger kind of scent. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's like, for me, it makes my mouth water almost because of that uh, orangey scented vanilla marshmallow. But the ginger in here, like, I like that spiciness that it adds to here. And this one kind of reminds me a little bit of Love Don't Be Shy by Killian because there's this syrupy, almost benzoin quality in here that reminds me of the thickness of the sugary uh, orange blossom in Love Don't Be Shy. So they aren't really the same, but whenever I smell this, I'm thinking of that fragrance, which I absolutely love as well. <laughs> so this is Classique Pinup from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. And finally, we have one more perfume here that is beautiful for year round, but I think also uh, it's perfect for colder weather for the spring. Oh, sorry, not the spring, <laughs> the fall and winter. Also a new one in my collection. 
This is Hugo Boss The Scent Private Accord. This is the only Hugo Boss perfume that I owned. I have smelled some others in the collection, but I didn't really feel the need that I Sorry, I didn't really feel the need to own any of them, um, but I got this one on sale and I was very happy to pick it up because this is a soft, yummy, delicious cocoa powder kind of scent. Um, there's mandarin orange in here, there's osmanthus, there's roasted tonka bean, and then the main, oh, it's so good. <laughs> the main note in here is this powdery chocolate powdered cocoa, so the kind that you would mix in with hot water or hot milk to make a chocolate milk. That's what this makes me think of and it's gorgeous. It really is. So I will say that the performance with this one isn't fantastic. It's quite light on my skin, kind of like a skin scent. Um, I don't really mind reapplying and I don't mind not projecting like I don't need to project and get everyone's attention when I wear a perfume all the time well of course I have other beast mode fragrances for that but when I want something quiet subtle easygoing delicious easy to wear and um, for me it makes my mouth water <laughs> then I would grab for this and then reapply if I needed to so yeah those were some beautiful fall fragrances, fall, winter, colder weather um, that maybe you would like to give a try. Uh, you guys probably tried most of these already, but I'd like to hear your opinions on them in the comments. And also, if you want to let me know which fragrances uh, you'll be rocking in the fall season 2021, I'd love to hear that. I'm always looking for recommendations and new things to try out. So, yeah. Hopefully I can hear about that in the comments as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.